For whatever reason, I've always been fascinated by rage games. I can't possibly come up with a reason. I swear, I was dead! Oh my god, I'm done! Oh god! Oh! Ah! Ah! No! 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 <laughs> oh my god! Nah, I can't think of anything. But 10 years ago, when I first started learning how to make games, I had every kid's dream of making millions off of their first fully released video game, as unrealistic as that is. So I figured I could probably make some 3D platformer rage game pretty easily and sell that immediately and boom, I'm a millionaire. So I threw together something that looked a little bit like this. I don't have the original project files anymore, unfortunately, but this is close enough. And I probably worked on that project for a few months, but eventually I stopped working on it. I don't really remember why, but it was probably because I'm not a 3D modeler and I couldn't replace the default Unreal Engine mannequin character. So pretty sure I gave up or I just got bored and moved on. I don't know. I was a kid. Either way, looking back, I still love rage games and I still think it'd be really cool to turn that simple project into something more. And now that I'm a more experienced developer and I've been doing this for a while, I could probably throw something together pretty simple like that in... I don't know, five days? All right, so I'm remaking this Rage game. Great, past me would be so proud. I finally came back to this project after all these years, but there's a problem right off the bat. This game, there's, there's nothing to it. It's a dude who runs around avoiding a bunch of spikes. That's nothing interesting. I've got to turn this baseline of a project into a video game. And I think the first thing we can do to tackle that is replace that mannequin character that I talked about before. And look, I could spend 50 bucks on some robot character or something and go with a robot who needs to escape this facility filled with evil robots that are trying to stop you from getting out or something like that. But instead, since I only have a week and I'm pretty broke, maybe I can work with a bean. Where have I heard this before? I made a game about a bean already. So I promise I was not doing this because I wanted to capitalize off of the fact that Bean Video is one of my best videos I've ever made. Um, look, the simplicity of using this default Bean thing is gonna help me propel this project forward and actually get it done in a week. So maybe I use this Bean to my advantage. Maybe I make a game where you play as this default untextured Bean trying to escape this prototype facility. I like the sound of this. This sounds creative and original and also weirdly kind of sounds like Portal, now that I think about it. I don't really know how that sounds like Portal. I've never played Portal. Um, that doesn't matter. What does matter is that I slapped this default untextured bean into this empty hallway, and then I threw a grid texture on everything else, and voila, it looks amazing. It looks like a prototype. It looks unfinished. I, I get it. That's the point. What matters is I already have a character with movement around in this hallway, and let's be real here, the movement of this character has been adjusted and actually feels good in comparison to whatever that other monstrosity was that I made 10 years ago. Now, this is when I ran into my first big issue, and it's an issue that would come up many, many, many more times throughout the project, the camera. Now, this is a third-person game, so there are a million different ways you can set up the camera, which also makes it really hard to get right. If you think back to the other Bean game that I did, I had the camera on a track, and the reason this worked for that game is because the whole path was linear. Putting the camera on a track actually helped me take the player from point A to point B and kind of guide them along the way. But in this game, I don't want that to be the case. I want the player to have to figure out where they're supposed to go, and putting the camera on a track would ruin that because the track is going in the right direction. So my other option would be to attach the camera to the player, but there are only so many ways we can do that, one of which being a pole. That was probably one of the worst transitions in video history, I know. But my point is, I can attach the camera to the player basically at the end of a pole. Like, like, look, it's really long pole. Like, back here, the camera could be back here and then stick out of the back of my neck and follow me around like this, you know? I really hope the audio quality in this video is any good because I only have one take, the sun's going down. But putting the camera on a pole comes with its own set of problems. For example, I guess I wasn't done with the pole yet. I kind of put it away already, but it's it's back now. Okay, so I have the camera attached to the end of this pole, right? And I turn this way. Oh, the pole hit the wall. Uh-oh, where should the camera go? Probably right, right here. So that way it's not looking at the wall, you know? Because, I mean, the view that you would have would be something like, like, like this. You would see this and not me. I'm gonna break a window if I'm not careful here. And see, this idea is great because Unreal Engine, by default, snaps the camera to the nearest point of collision, which would be right here on the wall. So then the camera's just closer to the back of my head 
But the problem is that snaps. It doesn't smoothly move to it. It just kind of snaps into place. And as great as that may be, that's not what we want. And of course, Unreal Engine doesn't have a way to smooth from point A to point B with the default spring arm component, which is what I'd be using to simulate the pole. So no matter what here, I'm gonna have to create some custom system to make the camera work. And there's two things I have to consider. One, do I want the camera to glide into place and risk, you know, going through the wall and letting you see the inside of the wall? Or if the camera hits right here, do I wanna just like highlight myself through the wall so you're still looking at the right distance and you can still see the wall, but you can see me through the wall kind of? I think that'd be an interesting way to go about it. I would like people to enjoy their experience while they rage. Maybe I should leave it. This didn't work right away. It does have a seizure sometimes. We'll fix it later, it's fine, it works enough. But at this point, day one's almost over, and I really just need to start building some sort of a level, which I did, I'm a little bit embarrassed of, but I never claimed to be a level designer, so it's bad. It's real bad, I, I get it, it's terrible. But because of how bad it is, that seems like it's a really good thing that we can tackle in day two. So you may have already noticed that I was live streaming this whole thing over on Twitch. And since day one took care of all the prerequisites and getting the project set up, setting up the character, all the boring stuff that nobody cares about, I could spend day two working on level design, which meant immediately discarding all the work I did yesterday on the level. Because I mean, let's be real here, it was terrible. Anything is gonna be better than what I made yesterday. Thankfully, this new setup makes it feel a lot less claustrophobic and a lot more open, giving you more room to breathe. You're gonna need as much breathing room as you possibly can get in this game. It's a rage game. It's gonna be a nightmare. One of the biggest changes other than the size of the room is the orange floor because having all those spikes lined out was just way too much to look at. Now I keep referring to the level as the level. You would think it's a video game, wouldn't there be more than one level? In this case, no. And that's not just because I have a week. You see, in Rage games recently, there's been a big trend of one big level, usually climbing from the bottom to the top, where if you fall, you can lose all your progress in one tiny mistake. Now, no, that's not what I'm trying to do in this specific game, but I do still like that idea. In fact, the original version of this game that I made 10 years ago, the game was laid out in two hallways. There were two levels, and they were just long, rectangular hallways. And I want to honor that in a way, so the level is going to be one long hallway. But that doesn't allow for the one big mistake reset you down to the beginning, which is good because I don't want to do that. I don't really like that trend. I feel like it's way overdone by now. But it does stick to that idea of it being just one level. And I think I'm going to make that work by splitting this hallway up up into rooms or sections of the level where there are checkpoints along the way. Right now, there's these save points, right? And if I restart, I restart here. And I can keep going through the level until I either make it to the next checkpoint or fail. And I get reset here, right? So I spent most of day two just adding to the level, thinking of everything more in rooms and sections rather than a bunch of separate levels. Same idea, different mindset. And after adding the first moving platform section of the game, which I forgot to mention, at the end of day one, I set up a system for moving platforms, which was way more difficult than it needed to be, but whatever, it doesn't matter, it works. I really wanted to implement lasers, but more specifically, cameras that shoot lasers. Look, the original game is really bland and empty. If I want any shot of turning this into a full game, I'm gonna have to get creative at some points, okay? You don't have to be a kid who loves comic books to love cameras that shoot lasers. That idea is just cool sounding. Give me a break. So I made a camera model, and that idea of shooting lasers kind of evolved more into, you know those rooms that are like full of lasers that are protecting one big gem at the end? I wanted to do something like that, except the cameras would have the lasers coming out of them perpetually, and they'd be scanning the room to stop you from passing by. Okay, here is where I want to introduce lasers. I think it'd be very interesting to have like security cameras that shoot lasers. Now, I never said it was easy. In fact, it was way harder than it should have been. How to make a laser beam UE4. So that we have that not within the meta and then we'll turn this into a Niagara system a little bit later. Yeah, I had to look up a tutorial on how to make the lasers look like lasers. Not exactly my proudest moment. So now I can hit it. I explode, then I do it again, I explode, okay. Now it happens every time. And now it happens when I spawn, because they're all right here. Well, that's a problem. Now the version of the lasers you just saw was the homing variation, the one that would, you know, follow you around if you're in a certain range. The laser didn't follow you, and neither did the camera, it just like, it rotates, that's kind of misleading, now that I think about it. You're not being chased by a camera, you're being chased by the laser that is coming out of the camera, which is rotating to face you in the right, you get the point. See, so we can have some very interesting puzzles here with this, and I can change the speed of it. It's at max right now. Whoa, that is terrifying. Okay, yeah, five being the max is definitely necessary. That's almost impossible. Either way, after that, I did a little bit of level design to kind of finish out the intro to the lasers to get ready for day three. 
I'd really like to have a playable game today, but right now there's no music, sound effects, menus. I mean, the level isn't even finished, come on. There's nothing that screams, this is a complete playable video game. So we're gonna have to fix that, like now. Which in my mind means building another section of the level that involves the lasers a bit more and, you know, actually uses them to their full potential, hopefully. But first, I changed and added some things before I even started stream. There is now a new feature. Flying spikes. <laughs> a lot harder. Laser section, I have changed a few things. Red lasers are just lasers that look around. And then there are purple lasers that are homing lasers. This section is hard now because this laser follows you. Then there's another one here. There's flying spikes. And then you have to get through here. It's not easy. And by this point, I'd finally started to get a hang of how I wanted to build the level. And in some cases, I got a little too overconfident and ended up with things like this monstrosity. Now, whether or not this was reasonable is up for debate, and we'll save that for another time. But at least for now, this was a fair enough point to end the game, you know, since I want to have a finished game today. That is assuming that it's not unreasonably short and you can beat the game in just a few minutes. And there's only one way I can find that out. What's up, Chris? You available today? Anytime through the afternoon. Yeah, I'm available right now. What's up? You want to come over and do a play test of a game real quick? Yeah, I'm down. Let me put some clothes on. All right, see you in a bit. This is Jacob. He's really good at 3D platformers, so if there's anybody who can give a good gauge of whether or not this game is too easy or too hard without developer's luck, it's probably going to be him, at least out of the people that I know. I'm not going to hire a speedrunner because I'm, I'm, I'm broke. While Jacob's getting ready and, and driving over to my house, can I even beat the game? I don't even know if I can beat the game yet. I haven't even tried it. Maybe I should try to like see how long it takes for me, the developer who has all the insider information. You know, the one who should be able to beat it as fast as possible should know the number of how fast, how fast as possible is. You know, I'm going to try to speedrun the game and see how long it takes me. I, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. Go. And I one shot this. Now that I said that, probably not. Never mind, I'm a god. I'm. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. Why did I say anything? Nice. Nice. I barely made that. The fact that I'm already here makes me concerned. This could very well become a thing where it's like, well, nope, you need like six more levels. Oh, this is too easy. Okay, got it. All right. Chaos lasers. I want to beat this before he gets here so I can at least say, yes, it's possible, you know? Okay, so this would have been a checkpoint, potentially. Oh, I almost missed that. End time. <laughs> Five minutes. Well, six minutes. Sub six. I did that in six minutes. That was way faster than I thought. I thought that was going to take me 20. Yeah, six minutes is way too fast. This is way too bright, is what I'm learning. If I want anybody to be even remotely interested in this game, slapping a big ol' you can beat in less than 10 minutes logo on top of the cover art or box or whatever is not gonna be a helpful selling point for the game. So I'm just gonna hope that this was all a bunch of developer's luck and Jacob's actually gonna have a miserable time throughout this. Does this make me a bad person? I'm making a game that's meant to be painful and then I'm inviting my friend over to play test, not telling him that it's meant to be a rage game. I am a bad person, aren't I? Good luck. Whoop. All right. Oh my God, I have to start from the beginning? These are tiny pillars. Okay, these are small then. I'm not just bad. All right. That's really fucking hard. Yeah. <gasps> oh, all right, cool. So you're such a bitch for that. I hate you so much. That can't kill me though, right? Like I'm, oh, I don't know the hitbox on these spikes. Oh dude, I'm gonna have to redo all of it too. <laughs> it's intimidating as Oh my god. You're unreal. <laughs> now, hard one. Okay. No, motherfucker. <laughs> all right. Well, this is all light work now. It's just <laughs> it was just more I Oh, mother. <laughs> I believe. Now Jacob can only stay for about 2 hours, so I kept adding checkpoints to speed up the process a bit when he got stuck. So that way he could at least experience a little bit of every section so he could give me some semblance of a final verdict. Okay, this is hard, dude. Chaos should Oh. Nice. Cool. Oh, we're doing one of these. What the? <laughs> f There's a laser over there. <laughs> you just know. I, <laughs> it like just registered right now. There's a fucking laser. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, hey man. Uh, oh, oh wow. Okay, we're doing that. I think I got it. Ooh, ooh. Oh, what the? F <laughs> is this room? I'm gonna assume I'm supposed to go to that one. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Temptation. Oh, 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 you, that's so fast. 
No! Speedrun, speedrun, speedrun. No! Where the f That? That's it. We did it. And we just fell into the void. I hate it so much. I hate you. <laughs> Honestly, really, really good. Dude, I didn't think it'd be nearly that difficult. Now, taking two hours and feeling miserable is exactly what I was looking for. This is a much better result. That apparently is much more difficult than I thought it would be, which is incredibly surprising to me. I like having that checkpoint up there, but I also really hate having that checkpoint up there. Instead of having the checkpoint up here, have it here along this. That's fine. I like that better, actually. Jacob is great at 3D platformers. I thought this would have been a breeze for him. I'm incredibly surprised, actually. I'm happy about it. Usually I would be like, man, I need to make this way easier. That's the best news I could have gotten. What I'm going to do right now is make a very basic menu system. And with that, I can comfortably move on to day four. So it's day four and there's still no music or sound effects, and there's still a good chance that the game's not even long enough. I know I said I was happy with Jacob's result, but let's be real. The longer the rage game can be, the better. After I did stream yesterday, I did extend a few sections of the level, so that helps out a little bit, but it wasn't anything super substantial. At least not to me. Maybe people who play it will really be able to tell a difference, but I don't know, there is a good chance that at this point I'm getting really, really, really good at my own game. Also, my buddy Andres, while I was making the lasers, gave a really good idea for a variation of lasers that freeze you instead of kill you, and I really think I want to implement that. Oh, and also there's not an ending yet. I should probably set up some sort of end game. I don't know what to do there. I never watched the movie. But instead of spending my time setting up the crucial gameplay elements, I spent five hours adding music and sound effects because that's what I do. I don't follow instructions. I don't do what's right. I do what my little heart desires. And on day four, that was scouring to find the best, most fitting piece of music. Can I just do like full tracks, please? Jesus Christ. What if you just, you're, you're playing this. This is so fitting. This fits this vibe so well. I gotta avoid the lasers. I gotta fight back against the machine. And adding my own variation of the Lego break sound effect because my chat wouldn't shut up about it. Okay, look, not all of it was me scouring to find music and setting up sound effects. A lot of it was just me being really bad at programming, which you would think by now, based on how much I've reiterated the fact that I've been doing this for 10 years, I should probably be able to do this stuff easier and better than I can. But I guess that's just not how I do. I don't know, we're running out of time. I might just want to say screw it and use that one like laser room music throughout the whole game. Because this is just the most fitting piece for the entire thing. Because it is really just like that escape the facility type sound. It's been five hours of music. We need to move on. It's just going to be that song. Whole time. Menu and everything. Either way, the game has music and sound effects now. Great. Cool. Check that off the list. Now, what else was, what else was on the list? Oh, right. An ending. So about that freeze laser I mentioned earlier. I definitely want to incorporate the freeze lasers. But I, that means I have to introduce it. So we might end up doing two extra rooms. That looks good. I'm cool with that. We're spending way more time on this feature than I thought we would. Yeah, okay, look, I never claim to have the best time management skills or just be that smart in general. I really like this freeze laser idea, but I know that I have to introduce the freeze lasers before I just throw it at the player and say good luck and then end of the game, which meant I had to add at least one more section before the final room so I could introduce the freeze lasers and not make it such a sudden switch from no freeze lasers to there's freeze lasers now, figure it out, good luck, which also also meant I was going to have to add add a final room of some sort to create a conclusion rather than just introduce the freeze lasers and then end the game. So I spent the rest of day four adding the freeze lasers and setting up some introductory section for it. And then I knew I was in trouble because now it's day five. So I don't have any footage from this day. And I did that on purpose. See, I cut yesterday's stream short. I didn't show anybody me building the final, final room where the ending is. And the reason I did this is obvious. I didn't want anybody to know what that final room was going to be. So anybody who plays that level will not have any insider knowledge on how to beat it. And let me tell you, that final room is a culmination of every single other room in the game. And now, before I send you off to go enjoy the game for yourself, because I know it's not satisfying to end it on a empty, open conclusion, here's some footage of my buddy Israel, Andres, and a few other streamer friends of mine testing out the game for themselves. Only one of them was actually able to beat the game. I'm gonna play this torturous game, apparently. I will not regret it. I'm just gonna say I'm not the greatest at platformers. Warning, your hands might cramp over time. Why doesn't it jump when I want it to jump? It double jumps when I only press it once. What's going on? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just because I'm caked up. I'm great at this game, you guys. Oh, fuck. Oh, so 
I can't make it over there. But you can't make it up there. Okay, so then, yeah, you just jump from here. There! Okay, you can't. Why am I sucking so bad? I got through the section last time easily. Then, whoop. There we go. Sweet. Huh? Oh, you've come across one of the hardest jumps in the game. Whoa, that's impossible. Am I supposed to go around that? You got this, I believe. I don't believe, but you know what? I, can, I got this. You made it! Oh, someone's calling me on Discord. Oh, hello, Andres. Hello. Uh, Hi. Dude, you sound dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm sweating balls right now. Yeah, that's the, that's that's all it is. Oh! Oh my God, he did it. What the, why did I jump in? Fado, why? Please. That's a trick play, right? Uh-huh. Just to there. Crazy. I was crazy once. I locked me door. A rubber room. A rubber room with rats. And rats make me crazy. Rats make me crazy. Hello. George, stop that. <laughs> this one job, dude. <laughs> you, you, you got that? There you go. I had it. I literally had it. I was right there. I was so close, but no. Oh, I made it. Oh, oh my God. I hate that you're actually making it. Oh my god, why? You just need one life to finish the game. What a great perspective yeah. that I don't share. <laughs> Here we go. Oh! Oh, 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 I got it again, you guys. <laughs> I got it! I got it! Ah ha ha! Sucks to suck! No. Three hours? And he's still on the first? Oh, oh. first. <laughs> Come on. Just look at the block and jump towards it. Get to the checkpoint. Go! As long as we're very precise and not stupid, we can make it through. And we're pretty stupid. <laughs> Are you supposed to make that jump? Wait, am I? This game makes me sad. <laughs> Why is sad of all things? I would understand mad. Mad is a good emotion to be in this game because I hate it. But I'm living. I wanted to press the R button. I assumed that I was gonna die there. I want to at least try to that other area. I, mean, I want to I make that jump. Okay, no, never mind. I'm not making that jump. All right, that's it for me. Okay, no. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Guys, look at that. The spikes stay vibrating. Why is that happening? Okay, I see. Thanks, Vano. Thanks, Vano. Thanks, Vano. Why is there a block out there? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just get me out of here. Oh my god. If you want to give the game a go for yourself, it's available for Windows and Mac for the first time on Game Jolt and Itch.io for free. It's completely free. You can download it and just click the no thanks, take me to the downloads button. You know the deal by now. It is just a prototype as it stands right now. Obviously, I made the whole thing in a week, so I wouldn't expect it to be super overly polished or anything. But if you'd like to see me turn this into something like a full release Steam game at some point in the future, let me know in the comments. And the only question left to ask is, can you beat it?